Let's talk about how you can track your fitness progress without ever needing to weigh yourself. I'm Sompi and I'm a fitness and nutrition coach. I believe every individual's fitness journey is unique and that's why I want to help empower more people to make healthier choices for themselves. When I work with clients, often one of the first things that they need to work on is eating more food to fuel their workouts and restore their metabolic health. Almost immediately, their first concern is, what if I gain weight or I'm scared to step on a scale? And I always assure them, I will not make you step on a scale. It's not necessary. And in fact, it can be really toxic for some people. For a lot of people, the scale is the only indicator of fitness or health that they know. I remember being weighed in PE as young as nine years old. I had already hit puberty and was much bigger than most of the girls and boys in my class because of this. So as young as nine years old, I felt terrible about my weight. I didn't understand what it meant, but in the context of PE, it really just felt like big number equals bad. And that feeling carried into my adult life for a while. For a lot of people, when they weigh themselves, it can impact their entire mood and trajectory of their day. When you get on the scale, there's often this number in your mind. And if the scale is lower than that number, you feel great. And if it's higher, you feel awful. But understand this, the number on the scale is not as important as you may think. When weighing yourself on multiple scales, you may notice the number is not the same. Not all scales are built equal. I have had scales with a seven pound difference between them. And even if your scale is accurate, the number on the scale fluctuates constantly. It'll fluctuate within the week, within the day, and sometimes even within the hour. So much impacts how much we weigh, what we're wearing, how much we sleep, how much we ate the day before, the day of, if you just worked out, are you on your period? Having the scale weight go up and down is entirely normal. Even if you weigh yourself at the same time every day, there's just no way to account for all those other little things that impact why it goes up and down. On top of all this, to look the way that you want, you may need to be a higher weight than you think. Muscle weighs more than fat and to achieve that toned look, it often requires more muscle than you might think. There was a point in my life where I would weigh myself every day. My entire day revolved around how that number made me feel. If the number was good based on an arbitrary number, it may encourage me to restrict calories or it may have encouraged me to treat myself. Then the next day, the number may be bad and I would punish myself by not eating. Or sometimes I would just say, screw it and quit what I was doing altogether. Unintentionally looking at the scale was negatively impacting a lot of my food behaviors in a way that made it infinitely more difficult to reach my goals. I'm at a point now where I mostly don't have an emotional reaction when I see the scale, but it took a long time for me to get here. Admittedly, when my mental health is poor, the scale is not something I can look at because I know that I may revert back to old thought patterns. Make the decision that is right for you, but I think most people don't need to be weighing themselves regularly and shouldn't be weighing themselves if it's only going to encourage bad habits and horrible negative feelings. If you have never not weighed yourself, I highly encourage you to put it away for a few months and see how liberating it feels. If you're someone who weighs themselves every day, try to limit it to a couple of times a week, then monthly, then not at all. See how liberating it feels. If you're worried you won't be able to track your progress without a scale, try to mark progress doing these things instead. The first thing you should implement is progress pictures. Usually I find when starting off, people are either pretty neutral about this or they're very hesitant because they're embarrassed. There is nothing to be embarrassed about progress photos. No one else needs to see these. These are for you. We all start somewhere and oftentimes it's not anywhere close to where we want to be and that's okay. Think of progress photos not in the now, but as a tool to assess where you want to be in the future and how far you've come. I've never had anyone say they regret progress photos after undergoing a transformation. In fact, most regret not taking pictures and those who only did a before and after picture wish they took more in between. Progress photos are important because they can be a great form of motivation. When we look at them, it's really clear to see where we started and how far we've come. Seeing that progress can be really amped and motivated to keep going. Progress photos also give you a great understanding of your transformation. Sometimes scale weight may be stagnant or even go up, or your tape measurements may be stagnant as well. But by looking at photos and comparing, 
you can see definitive differences you may not have noticed through other measurements. Maybe your arms look more muscular, or your stomach looks more toned. Sometimes people will pull back on calories based on scale measurements alone, and progress pictures can help you get a better idea of the full picture. Take progress photos on the same day of the week at the same time of the day so that you can try to mimic the same conditions. I typically recommend first thing when you wake up every four Sundays. For most people, I don't think you need to take progress photos more than every four weeks unless you're in that incredibly specific zone of trying to lose those last five pounds. Set your phone on a tripod in front of a window. Natural lighting will look the best. If you don't have natural lighting in your home, you can use something like a ring light. And if you don't have a tripod, get creative. Stick your phone on the windowsill, stack some books. For men, I recommend wearing boxers or short athletic shorts and being shirtless. For women, usually a two-piece swimsuit or a sports bra and shorts. If you still feel uncomfortable showing this much skin, wear something form-fitting. Try to wear the same thing every time. Pro tip, if you're someone who wants to post these photos on social media, air towards wearing athletic clothing, not underwear or swimsuits. TikTok hates when adult women wear swimsuits for whatever reason. Next, you're gonna back up so that you can get your full body in frame. Do whatever you need to do so that you can get your full body in the frame. Then hit the video record button. Take a pose to the front, relaxed, then turn to the side, relaxed, and then backward, relaxed. If you're someone like me, focusing on building muscle, feel free to take photos from the front, side, and back while flexing. You want to be consistent in how you take these. If you take your initial photos while sucking in, and other photos while you're not, the photos are going to be unfair comparisons. Once you're done taking the video recording, stop. <laughs> then review the videos and take screenshots from the front, the side, and the back. The next method is tape measurements. Full disclosure, for a lot of the same reasons I don't recommend the scale for some people, you may not be in an emotional place to take body measurements and that's okay. Often when I'm taking clients with a history of disordered eating through a reverse diet or a bulk, I'll have them stop taking measurements altogether for a few months. Mental health comes first. But for those who do feel comfortable with tape measurements, this often gives you a better indicator of your physique than the scale. The combination of progress photos and tape measurements can be a really great winning combo. When you use a tape measure, you want to wrap it around you snug but not tight. You shouldn't be squeezing your body with a tape measure. For your chest, measure the fullest part of your bust all the way around. Arms, measure your dominant arm around the widest area. Waist, measure the narrowest part of your midsection. Hips, measure the widest part of your hips and glutes. Leg, put weight on your dominant leg. Measure the widest part around. For most clients, I'll ask for chest, waist, and hips. There are a lot of different methods to track body fat percentage. Skin fold, calipers, DEXA scans, hydrostatic weighing, bioelectrical impedance analysis, 3D body scanners. Unfortunately, a lot of them have a pretty big margin of error, often 2-4%. to 4%. The most accessible ones like DEXA scans or ones where you have it built into the scale are often inaccurate. Even if you were to use the same machine each time for consistency, they're incredibly easy to manipulate with water intake. I personally find most body fat percentage tracking methods a waste of time unless you're going to spend an insane amount of money. I think photos are a way better indicator because two people with the same body fat percentage, even if they're the same height, same weight, may look completely different. I have not checked my body fat percentage in at least five years. Another way to see how you've progressed in your fitness journey is to keep a journal or a diary or some type of tracker where you can reflect daily or weekly on how you feel. How is your mood, sleep, hunger, recovery, energy, digestion, stress? All of these are really big elements of wellness. Health is so much more than just physique. When you focus on habits, you will see positive changes. If you feel like garbage trying to hit physique goals, what's the point? If you're chasing an old weight on the scale, how did you feel back then physically? Was this sustainable or did you feel like garbage? Fitness and health should enhance your life, not detract from it. You can also keep track of non-scale goals you have. Did you set a goal of going to the gym three times a week? Did you want to start having vegetables at each meal? Are you hitting new PRs? Set non-scale related goals for yourself to inch the needle closer to where you want to be and remember to celebrate wins outside the scale. I have clients tell me what are some wins they're making outside the scale each week. 
Healthy habits and fitness don't just impact your weight, but often how you feel about yourself, your confidence and how your body feels. When your body is being taken care of, it works for you and not against you. You may find yourself having the energy to pick up hobbies you haven't in a while or having the energy to try new things or find your work life improve with more mental clarity after changing up your foods. Celebrate these wins. Relationships with a scale can be complicated and bring about a lot of feelings. Don't feel like it is the only way to assess where you are in your fitness journey. If you're someone who feels constantly beat up by numbers on the scale and don't know how to get yourself out of the cycle, starting a diet and then stopping again and starting again and stopping again, I recommend you watch this video. Thanks guys.